Hey y'all, it's Heal Heat time. Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and this is our WWE show for the week. Let's jump right in with the so-so segments. The stuff that wasn't bad, wasn't good, it was just there. First is the opener of the night. We had Triple H and Stephanie McMahon came out, followed by Paul Heyman, followed by Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and John Cena. It wasn't overly terrible. They did some good hype, specifically Ambrose, Cena, Heyman, and a little of Rollins. However, I'm sick and tired of them starting the show the same way every week. It's like a crutch they lean on. Find a new way to get the storylines moving. Find a new way for me to care. But, anyway. To me, it's too much paint by numbers. I can't really go with it unless something really awesome happens in the front segment. Now, to bookend it, we have the main event of the night. Dean Ambrose and John Cena versus Kane and Randy Orton. And what should, in all estimations, be a good match because you got four solid wrestlers. Ends in DQ when Seth Rollins gets involved. The authority stands over the good guys. Ends the show looking strong. I don't know, for some reason this just didn't click to me. And it could be everything else that happened during the night that made it feel like that. But, I don't know. It just didn't feel like a main event didn't feel special. It didn't even feel like the wrestlers at that point even cared. Which is sad. Because you got, again, like I said, four very solid wrestlers in the match. Now we're going to move into the bad portion. The stuff that I just flat out didn't like. First off, we have Layla, accompanied by Summer Rae versus Rosa Mendez, accompanied by the train wreck that is Tyson Kidd and Natalya on the outside arguing. One caveat, Tyson, and to tell you for that matter, I know you guys have been a couple a very long time. I know Total Divas is doing the whole, you guys are having issues thing, and I know that's what they're getting it from. I will give you guys a fair warning if somehow either of you two watch this or someone gets back to them that watches this, do not bring this storyline on yourselves. Everyone that's done a splitting up storyline that was a married or dating couple onto the show ended up it becoming a reality in real life. So, just that as a caveat, it's my warning, fair warning. We had Layla versus Rosa Mendez. Rosa Mendez is an absolute train wreck in the match. Layla picks up the win, serves all to the outside. Natalia Tyson Kidd issue with possibly Rosa Mendez being a love interest for Natalia, someone that may or may not be interested in her, tried to kiss her on Total Divas. Just this was everything bad about the Divas division. This was the Diva division at the worst. The best wrestler in the match was standing on the outside. The second best wrestler in the match was standing on the other side with Summer Rae. Layla's good. She's not terrible. Rosa Mendez was horrible. Next up, continuing with Total Diva Total Garbage. We have Brie Bella, Nikki Bella talking in the beginning. Nikki says, well, Brie, we're going to make you do what I had to do. You're going to have to go in a handicap match versus Cameron and Eva, Eva Marie. Bree picks up the win, and another lackluster, sad, downright bad Divas match. And the Bree and Nikki Bella storyline, it has to be the worst storyline of this year. It's so boring, it's so overbooked, it's so, I don't know, it's just so stupid. And this coming from a guy I actually like the Divas, I think they could be a positive thing, and I think they could be used in a way that's interesting on the show. Next up, we have Los Matadors versus Heath Slater and Titus O'Neil, affectionately known as Slater Gator. We get the debuting Hornswoggle as Mini Gator. Of course, Hornswoggle and Torito do their thing. 
Adam Rose and the Bunny get involved. Slater Gator picks up the win. Just a whole silly... Again, when WWE tries to be funny, on purpose, it's this kind of humor they do. Kind of slapstick, goofy, there's a midget in a gay alligator suit kind of thing. And it just, I don't know, just boring and stupid in my opinion. Next up, we have the in-ring segment with Rusev and Lana. We talk about Big Show knocking him out on SmackDown, which brings out Show. They do their thing. Show makes it to the, his way to the ring. They they take a powder. Show pulls down the Russian flag in a in a move that the fans seem to love. Later on, WWE apologized for it. I don't know why. We've seen the Canadian flag go up people's noses. We've seen the American flag be threatened to be burned, be stepped on. We've seen the Iraqi flag and the Russian flag ripped in half. We've seen JBL kick a flag, or, or not JBL, Y2J kick a flag. I mean, really, if you're not familiar that this is an entertainment show, I'm sorry. Next up, our third of the three Divas atrocities, AJ Lee versus Alicia Fox, who Paige, before the match, introduces as her new BFF. Paige gets the interference, runs interference, Alicia picks up the win. Afterwards, they attack AJ Lee. And I, I just don't get it. Again, I don't get it. Alicia Fox is a good wrestler, AJ Lee is a good wrestler, Paige is a good wrestler. Why do they have to have this silly, crazy girl thing? Why? Why can't Paige just be a good wrestler like Randy Orton is? I understand it's a bad example because he's a crazy guy. But why can't... You know, why can't Paige be like Seth Rollins, an opportunist? Why can't AJ Lee be like Rey Mysterio, the little engine that could? Why can't Alicia Fox just be Alicia Fox and not be crazy? I don't know. She's very frustrating, very stupid. Furthermore, example of the WWE not knowing how to properly book a Divas match. Then we had Sheamus versus San Damian Sandow. Just a, I don't know, again... Much like I said with the main event, this match could have hurt by the fact that by the time it got on the air, I had already pretty much gave up on the show being any decent. It wasn't nothing to write home about. Probably, if my interest level was peaked, it might have even been in the so-so portion. But the way the show was going, this just, I don't know, didn't do anything for me. I didn't give two craps. And I knew Sheamus was going to win, so there's that as well. Last but not least for the bad segment, and hear me out, before you go bash me, if you notice, I got the AJ Lee Love Life shirt from last year's uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month on. Hogan comes out to pr promote breast cancer awareness. Great. Wonderful cause. Beautiful thing that the WWE does. Go to their WWE shop.com, shop WWE.com, buy a shirt, or donate to your local foundation. Anything to end the scourge that is cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, you know, any kind of ca testicular cancer, brain cancer, chest cancer, heart cancer, I don't care what kind of cancer. Anything to end the scourge, even if it's just one form of cancer, would be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. To me, the reason I say that this is bad is that they really can't use Hulk Hogan in a better manner. Hulk Hogan wouldn't be better served as a GM. He did a pretty okay role in, of it as T on TNA. Him with the Vince McMahon governor on might, might even be better. I mean, him as a special referee, you know, manager or a, I don't know, mentor to a younger guy on screen. 
uh, just my my opinion, and that's the reason I said it was bad. You have one of the all time great all time great guys in wrestling, one of the most known names. Not one of my favorites personally, but one along the lines of one of the most known wrestlers in the world and you use him for breast cancer awareness, which again, great cause. Thank God they're doing that. Thank you, Hulk Hogan, for doing that. I just think they could use him in a more impactful way in a wrestling show and also do this. Now coming off of that, we're gonna go into the question. Well, if you remember last week, we made it a little bit lighthearted because of how bad the show was last week. Unfortunately, this week's show is probably worse. So the question week last week was, what was your favorite moment of all time in wrestling? We got some answers from our friends, and then I'll get into mine. First is from our friend Dizzle Pup. I love Mankind winning the title on Raw. I think for me, it has become one of those moments that's be that has become cooler with age because of the story behind it, all the people switching over from Nitro when they gave away the result, Mick being pissed at the way he was laughed at by the WWE, I'm sorry, WCW announcers, etc. Just love it. Have a nice day. Totally agree. Beautiful moments. One of the few moments where I actually teared up as a wrestling fan. There's, there's a few guys, in my opinion, that I consider my my guys. Mick Foley is the absolute top of the list. He's my absolute favorite wrestler of all time. Next up's from our friend Joseph Hatcher. My favorite moment is the boiler room brawl be between Kane and Mick Foley. I thought it was hardcore and I'm a big fan of hardcore crazy and scary wrestlers that suited my taste. I remember the one between Taker and Foley. I seem to kind of remember this, but at the time of the Attitude Era, they were kind of just throwing all kinds of crazy stipulations in. But, again, two guys I love, so if you're watching this, Joseph, again, kind of point me in the direction. I have the WWE Network. Point me in the direction of what pay-per-view that took place on so I could go back and watch it, because I, I kind of remember it, but I don't. Just saying. If you are watching this, please... Please point me in the right place. Put it down in the comments so I know where to go. Next is from our friend Echo1922. Hi, new viewer here. Welcome, Echo. Heel Heat and my fa Hi, new viewer here, Heel Heat. And my favorite moment was SummerSlam. Or he puts SS97, so I'm not sure if it's SummerSlam or Survivor Series, but I guess we'll find out in a minute. One day before my birthday. Now, I love the pay-per-view, but this holds a special place because the pay-per-view was a birthday present for my brother. Everything ha that happened on that pay-per-view was just icing on the cake. It really was, lol. But sadly, my brother is no longer on this earth. Sorry to hear that. I'm sorry. These are first first time I read these comments is when I'm reading them to you guys. So sometimes stuff like that hits me. Every time I watch wrestling, it reminds me of my brother... So to cut things short, no matter how bad I think WWE could get, I'll watch. See you next week. Awesome, man. That is a great, 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 great story. And a great memory for you. Now, I, um, I also, and I'm going to put this down for a second, just to share with you, because you shared such a great, great thing with us. My mother has passed away. She's been dead a little bit over 11 years now. She died when I was very young. I was 26 at the time. It's my mother, kind of like your brother. Now, my mother was never a wrestling fan. She facilitated me watching wrestling. She'd buy me tickets, take me to the shows, buy me t-shirts, toys, all that great stuff. Wonderful woman. Buy me pay-per-views when I was young enough, too young to buy them myself. I just want to show you something. And this sits here. It doesn't get on screen. But it kind of, it's kind of what I use to hide my notes for the show. So you guys don't really see them. This is a, an exact replica of the ECW championship belt. Now, I got this in, I believe, 1999 was uh, when she bought this. Either 99 or 2000. 
towards the end of ECW, the original ECW. My mother bought this for me. It was, I believe, three, four, maybe even five hundred dollars. And this was one of my Christmas presents, and it holds a very special place in my heart. Um, if you've, if anybody's watched the show, you know how how much of a fan of ECW I was, and her to actually do this for me and buy me this, the symbol of everything ECW. Kind of like what you said about your brother, my friend. I appreciate you sharing. Maybe the connection's great. Connections like that are beautiful and it helps, you know, helps us move on and remember great things. Also, her absolute favorite was Ricky the Steamboat Dragon, as she called him. Um, as I get older, I realize it's because my mom's a pervert and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was a cute guy. I had probably had nothing to do with the fact that he was one of the best wrestlers of all time. But thank you, Echo1922. Thank you for sharing. I hope that me sharing back with you gives you a little bit of, you know, me reaching out to you and saying, hey, we got these connections too. Everybody does. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you. And back to the question. Sorry about that little detour, folks. Kind of felt moved to do it. Next is from our friend Luke Norman. My favorite moment was when DX re returned in 2006. I only just watched... I was, I'd only just watched WWE, and when they came back, it was so much fun. Just started watching WWE. That was a pretty cool moment, I agree, definitely. I didn't write, quite pan out to the greatness it should have been, but still cool. Next is from our friend Benjamin Mean 19 Hey, he'll heat so many moments to choose from. At the moment, I'm addicted to Scott Steiner's WWE debut. That's the one where he, uh, you can visibly hear, or audibly hear him yell, give me the fucking mic before he steps in the ring. I think the guy was so entertaining in WWE buried number, another WCW store. Anytime that Scott Hall ever said, hey yo, was amazing. He was so cool. Cactus Jack vs. Triple H, Royal Rumble 2000 stands out. Undertaker vs. Brock Lesnar held in the cell match at New Mer No Mercy 2002 was brutal. Stone Cold vs. The Rock at Mania three times. Anytime Shawn Michaels dropped the elbow, any Macho Man promo, anything Eddie Guerrero did, Brett vs. Owen, Angle vs. Michaels, when Kane body slams the big show over the top rope at Royal Rumble 2002, JR putting over Rob Van Dam's five star. There are so many, it's impossible to say just one. The reason I love wrestling is that all the different things we love in wrestling accumulate. And last but not least, our friend Steve Tatnani. There are a lot of moments in wrestling that I have as favorites. So to be fair, I'm going to break down my favorite moments according to promotions that occurred in. WCW, War Games 92, Sting Squadron vs. The Dangerous Alliance. Best War Games match ever, in my opinion. Incredible match by far, in my opinion, the best War Games match. See, Steve, we have some more thoughts. WWF, the click hugging in the middle of the ring, May of 96. The crowd went crazy when that happened. ECW, Shane Douglas throwing down the NWA belt, igniting the flame, which became Extreme Championship Wrestling. TNA, Piper doing a shoot promo on Vince Russo to his face. Wonderful moments. My favorite was one that was already mentioned, the Mick or Mick Foley winning the world title. It really does hold that really special moment in my life. It almost made me cry. I actually, I do, I do believe I did cry. I, I, you know, I'm man enough to admit it. It moved me so much, kind of like Daniel Bryan winning the belt at WrestleMania this year, moved me to tears. That actually did as well. Another, I would have to say, the the Shane Douglas throwing down the belt is one of the moments that I think it doesn't quite get the respect it deserves. It said a lot. And a lot of people have done it since then, but the shockwave that it sent through the wrestling industry is still still resonating today. That's how important that moment was. Just two, in my opinion, and both were actually mentioned by other people as well. So I'm glad to see we all have very similar likes, and great to hear all that, all your ideas and all your your favorite moments. Now the question this. The question of the week for this week is 
probably going to be one of the few times that we ever do this. This one's going to be an, a two-option question. Myself and a friend of mine, Gary Rhodes, who sometimes is on the show with me, started the show with me, is on the earlier sh all of the early shows. Unfortunately, his work doesn't allow him to do it every week as mine does. I record this at my house. We record the show at my house. I could literally just walk out of my bedroom into my living room where I record the show and do this anytime I want. Gary has to actually have to come over, get you know, all that stuff. So it's a little bit harder for him. We're still great friends. I still see him. I still hang out with him. He just doesn't have an opportunity to do the show as often as he would like. So we're having an argument. And here is the argument. We're going to let you guys settle this. Whose theme song was better? The Honky Tonk Man or Demolition? I'm not going to let you know which side I'm on until next week. But it's the right side. Just let us know what you think. Either Honky Tonk Man or Demolition. Who has the better theme song? And if you're not familiar with either, if you're a younger viewer that doesn't remember either of them, Hit up YouTube, they're, they're all on there. If you, if you hate them both, I mean, sorry. But let us know what you think. Hit us up on Facebook, hit us up on Twitter. Put it down where? Down there in the comments. And last but not least, our good portions of the night, the few and far between, the first, the three-way match for the Intercontinental title, Dolph Ziggler versus Miz versus Cesaro. Good match, Ziggler comes out on the winning end. Just a fun, interesting match. Probably the best thing to happen on the show. Next, we have the uh, Dean Ambrose stealing the merchandise and throwing it away with Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury becoming the new Stooges and trying to chase Ambrose, the new Austin, I guess, all through the, the show. We get Seth Rollins coming out to get his briefcase back. It's slimed in the face. I think the line of the night was when Rollins came out with security and Ambrose said, are you sure these guys are security? I think some of these guys were Rosebuds last week. I thought that was kind of funny and a little bit inside. Just an interesting little dig, I guess. Last but not least, Mark Henry versus Bo Dallas. Bo picking up the surprising win. I enjoy it. I think there's some kind of weird connection with Rusev and Bo Dallas going on. I don't know if they're in cahoots or if... I don't know, maybe Bo's just an opportunist picking up the pieces of the dominant Rusev. Either way, fun little thing, a little thing to add to the show. I enjoy Bo Dallas. I think he's entertaining. Now coming off of that, we're going to go into our ratings. We have a 1 to 5 scale. 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. One's a great Kali, two is a Heath Slater, three is a Stardust, four is a Cesaro, Cesaro five is a Daniel Bryan. Now, every now and again, we have to go off the scale. Sometimes it's greater than the, the five, one to five scale. Sometimes it's worse. This one of those weeks where it's worse. When it's a historically bad show and one's not a bad enough rating for it, we give it a shot. I don't even want to give it a number. And it doesn't even deserve to be a one. This show was boring. This show was... It insulted my intelligence. There was nothing of interest for me. I did not enjoy anything on the show. Honestly, if I did not know that I was going to review this show, I would have tuned out. I would have went to watch Monday Night Football. Which was a blowout too. Or watch Gotham. Or, you know, one of the old pay-per-views or something on the WWE Network. Or anything. Watch paint dry. Just tons of things I could have done that are better uses of my time. Play Destiny. But, I suffered through all the way to the end because I do do these reviews. At some point, there's going to be a breaking point where I, if the show's bad enough, I guess I'm just going to turn it off and not review the whole thing, but haven't reached that far yet, because even when wrestling is bad, it's still wrestling, like our friend said, and it still has some of my favorite guys in there, and there's still the hope 
that by the end of the show we'll get we'll that one moment that resonates. But basically, that's all I have to say about this. My name is George Coles, and this has been another episode of Heal Heat.